Well, thank you so much for staying with us. And if you have just joined us, you're watching SA Designs brought to you by ANN7. My name is Audrey Chiminder. Before the break, I had with me my panelists. I remind you who I was talking to a, a bit earlier on from the Democratic Alliance, the mayoral candidate, Councillor Ethel Trollope from COPE. We had Councillor Kwezi Janana from the ANC. Again, we had invited the executive mayor to be a part of this debate, and uh, he decided last minute that he will not be taking part. So we have Councillor Fizzi with Sibeko from the UDM as well. We have Councillor Mungameli Bobani. Well, it's time to go to the floor now. We have residents of this municipality that will be raising their concerns um, to my panelists. So where do we start from? We will start with uh, a member from the ANC. Ma'am, please do stand up. Or is it from the ANC? From the ANC. Oh, let, 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 let me pose my question to the DA. Uh, DA, you, you refer to Cape Town as a model city. A model city that has been created uh, through the sweat and blood of our people. Now, it is only Cape Town that you refer to, and you fail to tell us that before local, uh, democratic local government, you were part and parcel of an, of an oppressive regime. Now, you promise us today that you will improve conditions of Port Elizabeth or the metro, as it were. Now, I challenge you to clearly tell us as to what is it that you are going to do better because all, all the time, since 1994, you have telling us about your plans and your plans, your plans, which are not changing in any okay, way. Thank you, sir. I think the gist of your question is um, what the Democratic Alliance Council, would you like to respond to that now or do you want to take a minute to, yes, please respond to it. The narrative of the Democratic Alliance and the apartheid is creeping up again sure. and uh, your track record as the DA and what improvements you have made. Just for the record, um, the ANC have done nothing about corruption in this municipality. Nobody has been fired. People have made claims of 29 officials being fired. None have been fired. 29 are on suspension. Every single municipal manager has been given a golden handshake since 2011. Every single one of them. Nobody gets held to account. Now, just for the record, sir, the DA only won the city of Cape Town in 2011. And our majority has grown from a one-seat coalition majority to over 65 percent. We won the province in 2009, and our majority has grown since 2009. I'm not talking about apartheid. I'm talking about post-apartheid South Africa, where people in Cape Town and the Western Cape are voting for the DA in more and more numbers because of the service delivery that takes place there. Even people leave this city and this province. 45,000 people have gone to seek greener pastures in the Western Cape because that's where things are happening. So you can't fool voters. You can't fool voters, but the ANC has got this age-old propaganda about the past. Voters in the Western Cape are looking forward and giving us more and more support on the strength of what we do in government, not in opposition. Thank you, Councillor Trollope. And just a reminder that to keep our questions short and sharp so everyone gets an opportunity to, to speak today. Yes, sir, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Firstly, I'm Sebenzile Khafani. I'm residing here in the Nelson Mandela Metro Municipality. Uh, before going to my question, I just want to correct the speaker of the ANC sitting there. In the area where I come from, there are houses with no water and with no toilets for 15 years. If she wants to know, it's Keiha in Greenbushes. That's where I come from. My question is to the mayor in waiting, Mr. Arthur Trolley. Our roads, sir, of this city are full of potholes because of the protest, because of the service, of the lack of the service delivery in this metro. I would like you to tell the citizens of this metro, how are you going to deal with that? Thank you. Very quickly, Councillor, issues of potholes. Thank you very much. Uh, the issue of potholes is an issue that affects everybody who lives in the city. Whether you commute on public transport or your own vehicle, it holds you back. And we have potholes in the city that just never get fixed. In the city of the Western Cape, uh, in Cape Town, we have the shortest turnaround to fix potholes. But here's the thing. You, when you fix potholes, you create employment. You use people to fix potholes. So this government doesn't only fix potholes, it doesn't even create employment for basic jobs to take place so that we can fix our, our, our infrastructure. As I said, our infrastructure budget was cut by half. We need to double our infrastructure budget, fix our infrastructure so we can attract investment. When we attract investment, we need roads where people can transport their goods and services. So if we fix all of those things, there's an adage that says a stitch in time saves nine. If you don't fix a pothole within a week, 
it takes two weeks to fix it. If you don't fix it in two, week, uh, two months, it takes three months to fix it. If you don't fix it in five years, you have to rebuild the road. The fact is we have to rebuild many of the roads in the city because they've just deteriorated to such an extent that you cannot fix potholes anymore. Right. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, Councillor Siboko could tell us why the budget was cut by half for infrastructure? Come again. The budget being cut in half. Would you care to explain that? The budget on infrastructure is being used. We have... We have... In Nonjinga area, we have construction in place in terms of dealing with the houses without toilets and toilets without houses. At dispatch, Kuha is going to deal with about 379 houses to fix that problem. In Mission Bay, as we speak, on site, the contractor is busy there. It, it therefore means that we have a strategy. We are going to go to Keiha. We are aware of Keiha. We, in, in the process of dealing with it, unfortunately, we cannot be everywhere at any, uh, uh, every time. As I sit here, four, four areas are being dealt with and we're busy dealing with also issues of relocation. Okay. Do you, do you feel you have answered the question of cutting the budget in half to the electorate in case they were curious? Do you feel... Cutting the, budget, the budget has been cut in many areas, not only in infrastructure. Okay. But having cut the budget, work is being done. That's what I'm saying to you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Let's get another question from the floor. Thank you. My name is Temelani Kondile member of Congress of the People and a candidate for what 17. <laughs> I don't mind about poodles. Man, only a week ago, I have seen our unemployed graduates. I have seen unemployed people begging their grandparents coming from informal settlements where there's nothing whatsoever they are taking from. Being made, being promised that they will be employed in the municipality police, that doesn't have office, that doesn't have uniform, that doesn't have a car, that they are not even a, a clear and a proper organogram. Please don't be excited. You are volunteers, you've got nothing to do. Now, now. I am talking on their behalf as well, because as Congress of the people, as Congress of the people, I am worried about what I see here. Okay, th thank you. Now, sir. my question, therefore, because by virtue of having people queuing there in large numbers, whilst you know that you've got security guards of the municipality that are there, that must be integrated. You've got your traffic that must be integrated as well you've got other people and you know that you are only eyeing your volunteers i want to ask the congress of the people i want to ask the opposition parties as well that what are you gonna do with educated people who have been made fools in the prison house okay issue and see knowing fully that they won't be employed so opposition parties can you actually govern and lead us on this issue of the unemployed, because seemingly people will be unemployed until they go to grave. Thank you. Yes. So again, I appreciate all your questions coming from the floor. Just a quick reminder to keep them short and sharp, please. We will come back to, I've noted your question. We will get the uh, panelists to answer that. Let's get two more questions from the floor before we come back here. I want to ask the ANG one question. If your president have to pay back now eight million, whose money are you gonna take? Are you gonna take the Sasa money? The rate payers money of out of your pocket, thank you. As the ANC led government, we've trained 608 unemployed graduates within this short space of time. We've placed 47 graduates were placed in, in real work positions. We've trained 175 uh, people for ABET. We've trained 15 electrical engineers in learnerships. We've trained 50 carpenters. We've trained 100 
learnerships. We, we've embarked on that learnership for 100 people on plumbing. So we've, we've given out 85 bursaries, and those people have been approved and given money. We've, we've trained 2,344 in skills, in different types of skills. So we're dealing with issues of skilling our people, and we're dealing with issues of unemployed graduates. But do you think more I can be done, Councillor? More can given be done, that, I'm, you know, I'm talking the number short of, space of time. Okay. With that indication and those indicators, it means a lot can be done, given time. Within five years, if you give us the next five years, we'll do more. But I'm amazed that people do not know that there is a rule of law. You don't go into office and fire people. You go into office, you charge people, you respect that law must take its course. In terms of houses that are being sold, we've said it now and again that if your house has been sold, come with evidence, go to the police so that those people can be charged, those issues can be investigated. You cannot just listen to anybody and then go and, and, and punish people for that. Right. Well, thank you. Let's get more questions. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity. My name is Edward Camillo, and I'm a resident of the metro here in, in our uh, municipality. My question is directly to the uh, executive member of Mr. Jordan. Uh, I would like to know from your side, ma'am, you're talking about housing that's been delivered in this metro. Do you know there's an area in our Ward 11 that has been standing for more than eight years now, and that land is, and the people that's living on the land are so aggravated and cross and angry with themselves and trying to take it out on councillors. And, and that councillors is innocent in the sense, but the people that needs to take the blame are you people that are in government now, the ANC, no other people. I would like to bring this to your attention. That people that staying on that land, ma'am, I've been living there for more than seven years. Yeah. And also, they, they, they are not even recognized as an informal settlement. My question is, for how long is these people going uh, to stay in this atrocious uh, conditions? And also, there's, there's people that move into homes, Mr. Trollope, in Zorza Street. They're living there now for past four years. They didn't even receive a title deed to say that homes that belong to them. So how can, how can you sit here telling blatant lies in front of the people of the metro and in front of the people of South Africa. Okay, I think you've made your point. That you are saying there's stability in the informal settlers. Did, did you manage to hear the question that I he think, asked? Informal settlers? I think the informal settlement that he's talking about in Ward 11 is people living on private land. It is therefore difficult then to have to negotiate with a person who does not even live in the metro but who owns the land. And you cannot just build houses in a private land. It's a process that you are aware of and we're taking step on. And uh, I just want to ask um, uh, Councillor Trollip, are, are the indigents taken care of? Are you still with us, Councillor? Are the indigents taken care of in this municipality? Is there a proper plan that makes sure that they're serviced? The indigent aren't taken care of in the city. As I said, you could go to any part of this town where RDP houses are being built. Just yesterday I was in an area where RDP houses are built and there's no channeling of electrical wire. So people have to electrify their homes themselves. And they're not qualified. The National Home, the Home Building Regulations Council says you may not transfer a house if there's no proper electrification. So one, title deeds are not given out in this municipality. We have the worst issuing of title deeds of all the metros in South Africa. The housing is decrepit. Some people have houses to be rectified before they've even taken occupation. And Danny Jordan says that people must choose either rectification or construction. But it's not an either or. If you build a house so badly that it's got to be rectified before people move in there, the government must take responsibility. So I would say that the people of the city are not being taken care of, especially the indigent. You can go to any indigent house in the city and you will see that they have massive water bills, 30, 40,000 rand. So when they want to buy electricity, they have that water deducted before they get electricity. And the people that are shouting there, they're the people who are responsible for it. 
Yes, 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 ma'am. As we speak, we are verifying 7,765 title deeds. We've already handed out about 2,000 title deeds. We started in Warma already. We, we, we have 2,000 title deeds in this verification that has already been confirmed. You cannot wake up one day and give a title deed to a person where we know that there's been instances where people are no longer staying in those houses. You must get the actual person who is in, who the title deed is in his name. So the issue of title deeds, we are busy with it and we have already started handing them out. Okay. Thank you for that response. Let's get a couple more questions. Yes. My name is Shakes from, from Motherwell. Uh, my question is directed to all the panel there. Uh, what are you going to do here in the metro about the labor brokers in, when you are in governance? Knowing that we've got, we've got bylaws, each city got bylaws, what are you going to do about the labor brokers? My second question is about employment, that is job creation. I understand there was a norm that the refinery here at Kuha was online for the people of this city. I don't know if the refinery now will be taken to KwaZulu Natal. I want an answer to that. I thank you. Thank you for your question. Let's take one more and then we'll come back. Uh, my name is David. I'm from Guanacolo. I've got two questions. The first question is directed straight to the ANC. And please, Mama, tell straight to Anbale Gundizengo. Who elected Denis Jordan? My second question goes straight to Tatrolip. The DA is good in analyzing the problems and proposing solutions. Now, the how part the DA fails. I'm speaking on behalf of the graduates who are sitting at home, sitting in the streets in the location. What are you going to do, Mr. Trollip, to make sure that those degrees abanazo by Akayashwangazo? I'd like to go back to the opening remarks of Ethel Trollip. He said that the DA is the only party that can take this metro. Now with all due respect, with all due respect, mine is how when you had five years in the northern areas, nothing happened. Let, let us, let us not just focus on northern areas. Let us say the metro. Let us go straight to the people who is the concern. The people, the community of this metro. When the IDP was passed unanimously by all parties, the DA chose not to support it. How then can you say how? How? Thank you for your question, ma'am. I uh, just to remind our viewers that we're coming to you from uh, Nelson Mandela Bay Metro Municipality. Now we have a poll survey that we have been running as AN and Seven, and we have asked questions to people of the Eastern Cape as to who they feel will win this municipality come the third of August. And I just want to share with you some of the results that we got, and I'll ask my panelists how they feel about it. Um, ANC received 64.5 percent. UDM was uh, behind with 9.1 percent. The Democratic Alliance 7.3 percent, and the Economic Freedom Fighters were at 8.4. Now, my question to you as my panelists, it appears uh, the ANC and uh, the UDM are leading the pack. The ANC obviously leading. What does this say about the fortunes of the Democratic Alliance? This is just a survey from the people from this municipality. Well, look, you can, you can refer to any surveys you like. Last year, the ANC loved the Ipsos survey. Last week, they hated the Ipsos survey because it put the DA 10 points ahead of the ANC. The only, only survey that's really worth anything is the survey that's going to be done on the 3rd of August. 
Now, I'd like to answer the question that was put to me, if I may, about yes, yes, sure. what's a DA going to do about jobs? Well, here's the thing. We have the highest unemployment rate in South Africa in this metro. We have the highest youth unemployment of 47.3%, which means every second young person is unemployed. We, we as a municipality are not going to use labor brokers. We are going to employ officials into this municipality to implement DA policies. We have a graduate employment policy where we will use skills. We're not going to have use the revolving door of CADA recycling in the city. We will appoint people on merit, people who can do the job and get the job done. And many of those people are graduates out of our own university in the city. But here's the thing. If this government says that they can do something about job creation and the executive council says they're going to bring change, what change are they going to bring? The ANC has been in government here since 1995. Ma'am, I didn't say the DA is the only party that can win here. I said we're the only party that can credibly offer change because where we govern, we govern well. Thank and you, we Councillor Trollope. I want to come to the ANC now, then I'll come to the UDM. Ma'am, our poll survey, your thoughts on that, and also if you could answer the questions that were posed by the gentleman before we did the poll survey. There was a direct quest question that wanted a direct answer. Of course you can understand, it comes from a person who does not know the processes of the ANC, but think that they know. The mayors in the ANC are deployed by the NEC. But the mouth of the NEC is the president. The president does not wake up in his house and pronounce on a mayor. The NEC sits and discuss, and the president is the mouth of the ANC. Is that not what in happened in Swanee, though? Local, in terms of the local... In terms of the labor brokers, we are in a process of taking stock of what is it that is outsourced and what is it that needs to be insourced. So we are dealing with that matter. We are aware what we, where we want to go. Right, uh, let's go to the UDM now. Councillor Bobani, you've been quiet for a second there. Uh, the UDM is not going to be an official opposition here. The UDM is going to take the metro as we have taken 130. And those ANC hooligans, their time has come to an end on the 3rd of August. Those ANC hooligans. Let's be, let's be respectful of, of the words that we use. Will be in. They are making that noise. They've been making that so thank, noise. Thank they you, thank you for your response. Up there, there's a question that needs. Can we have a microphone with that lady? Okay, we'll, we'll start with you. Uh, we are having, um, my question is directed to Mr. Atoll Trollip. The first question is one. Our mayor currently, he cannot uh, uh, go and travel overseas to attract even investors. He's bound in South Africa. When you come in as a mayor, are you going to be able to focus on the people of the metro? and making sure you deliver services to the people. The, the last question, we are having a very controversial mayor who appoints people who are controversial. We are having an appointment of a ED for, for safety and security, Mr. Lindamti, who is having a, a, a cloud on, over his hand, true possessor contracts. What TA is going to do about that when we are in government? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for those remarks. Well, we have, unfortunately, we've run out of time. We'll ask our panelists to uh, give us closing remarks. I'll start with you, Councillor Trollope. How would you like to motivate the electorate to vote for you as we close the program? First of all, also, if you'd like to answer the question very answer, quickly. I'll, I'll that answer came the through. question. Uh, for a person who's to travel overseas every week, it's strange that the mayor of the city doesn't travel anymore. You can't attract investment if you don't travel abroad. We live in a global village. The, the executive councillor said if you report something to the police, they'll do something about it. Linda T's case was reported seven years ago by the SIU to the NPA and they've done nothing about it as they did with the Jacob Zuma case. So it's clear that you cannot entrust government to the ANC. You can entrust government to the DA. You'll get a good, clean, honest government. Right. We go to court now. Councillor Kwezi Chanyana, please have your closing thanks. remarks. I nearly, I nearly thought that perhaps I'm no longer part of this country. That is it may. I must say that uh, there is one question that has been uh, raised consistently of unemployment. 
I think what you are saying as COP is that first thing to deal with graduates, professionalize your administration. Make because for every post that is advertised, there are qualifications and experience needed to do that. So make sure that you employ people according to qualifications. But uh, secondly, to those that have not that have never been in the space of work, create an opportunity for what is called in-service training. Uh, uh, that is your intent. But thirdly, one most important element in the institute across local government in the country is that uh, uh, the ruling party has never created an opportunity for municipalities to have entities outside your water, electricity, but make sure that there are entities that deal with key services that are supposed to be done by the uh, by municipalities, for instance, transport development. You see, build an entity similar to MBTA that will focus primarily on, uh, on transport economy because you will never have running buses up until that function is taken outside these corridors and run outside so that you have a sustainable uh, transport development. But two, if you talk about housing development here in the city, it's a challenge, you see? Now, uh, there are about this city, for, for it to conclude housing development, uh, it needs to address uh, 80,000 backlogs. It means so many people that are seated here do not have houses. Right. Now take the power from the province. Build an entity here. Don't give houses to HDA. Build an entity here and increase construction industry because construction industry is the most accessible industry from, by these people. Right. So thank, give thank them you. that thank opportunity you, um, to build, uh, to for build those houses. Closing remarks. We go to the ANC now. Please, Councillor, motivate the voters, why you should retain the vote in this municipality? No doubt the voters will vote for the ANC because I cannot see voters voting for the DA. It is the only metro. Cape Town is the only metro where we saw people carrying baggage and throwing them in the airport which means the bikers system is in dandrums in, the, in, 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 in Cape Town. Secondly, you deal with the issue of drunk and driving. You don't want people to employ this person because of drunk and driving. But in Cape Town, you employ somebody in the name of Pinar who has been charged with murder. Where is the, where, where is the competition there? The metro has a budget of 11 billion. You need a person who has, a, who has all the skills in, in financial management. You don't want a dropout from university. You want a person who has experience in management. You vote DA, you vote racism. That is what we have experienced. Thank you, ANC from the UDM. Well, uh, well, we are not in Cape Town, we are in the Nelson Mandela Metro. And in the Nelson Mandela Metro, it is the ANC that is in charge. And these residents, they belong here. Now, what the UDM will do, when the UDM takes over on the 3rd of August, first thing that the UDM will do we will fight corruption. Number one, ma'am, what we will be doing? How, how a person can say he is fighting corruption when in his own administration, when the council on the 14th of November last year employed an, a director, and when you employ that person, you sign a contract of a company of that person. You are not signing a contract whereby you are appointing that particular individual, but instead you sign a contract with this company. Are you fighting corruption when you do corruption in your own backyard? And therefore, uh, when the person that is saying that is fighting corruption, he's quiet about these things. And the UTM, first thing that we'll be doing, will be cleaning this administration, will create the, job, the jobs, it will not be deployment. We don't want section 154, we want them out. We want people of the metro. The graduates are talking. They want jobs. 
Why are you training the graduates for where, for how long? Thank you, Councillor Bobani, for those closing remarks. And we are well, ladies and gentlemen, the you heard for yourselves, the, the gloves are off in Nelson Mandela Metro Municipality. Well, we'll see what happens come the 3rd of August. I had members from the Democratic Alliance, from the ANC, from the UDM as well as COP. Very important residents joined us in the second half of the debate, as you heard for yourself. Well, thank you for watching SA Decides, brought to you by ANN7. My name is Audrey Chimanda.